So, Anya and Mimi, I have a question for both of you first, because I always love asking about the value of a good scene partner. And I'm especially interested in hearing how that relationship evolved for you two, given how different Yen and Frangillo's material is in season two. So what is something you've come to appreciate appreciate about the other as a scene partner more than ever in season two, given how the characters evolve alongside each other? I learned so much from you, Mimi. Uh, yes, as Jennifer, but me, like, as Anya as well, I think you're an amazing, um, I think you're amazing. <laughs> I just do. I love watching you. I love watching you in the season, in those series, and just playing against you is just, like, I, I don't know, it's it's just someone I just, I, you, I find you so easy to work with. I can't see you on the screen, so I'm sorry, but I really do. Um, so it's just been a joy to have that journey with you. Um, as Jennifer, uh, same thing. I think she learns a lot from Fringilla. Um, they're both kind of connected by the experience they've shared and connected by, you know, they really, I think they really love each other to some degree. And um, they just have to, they have to find a way individually through this world. And as as kind of the, the, the women of this world, it's quite, it's quite harsh sometimes. Um, it's, it's a very brutal uh, kind of world and you kind of can't rely on anyone. So it's hard for you to properly form the relationships that you you may want to or uh, yeah I think it's, it's a complex one mm, the feeling is so mutual like I love working with Anya um and it's the detail like Anya as an actress is very detailed and um you can do a take and it can your watcher as her scene partner and be like oh my god that was incredible and then she'll be like, oh, I think I missed something. What do you think this means? Or what do you think this is? And then she'll give you another take that is just equally as incredible. Um, and so you can't work with Anya and not grow and search for new things because she, she, like her presence just doesn't allow it. Um, so I love that about her. And in terms of Fringella and Yennefer's dynamic, Fringella learns a lot from Yennefer, but I think it kills her to show them that. So when they're together, you'll get this kind of, you're not affecting me. And then when they're apart, you see just Yen influencing decisions and choices. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that about their relationship. I think she kind of looks up to her in some way. I honestly do. I'm going to put the spoiler warning up because Joey, I feel like I can't ask you any questions unless I'm potentially spoiling something. And this gets into some details here. I think this is very well covered and clearly conveyed in the show. But when I'm moved by something, I tend to get greedy and want to know more about it. So was there any additional backstory work that you needed to do on your own to really determine why Yaskier became the Sandpiper? And maybe more specifically, where he found the faith in himself that he was capable to do that? What a wonderful question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, in my preparation for season two, I, I um, did a, a fair bit of research into... Uh, entertainers throughout history who use their platform and their uh, position within uh, of fame within the entertainment industries to to do good. Um, uh, amazing people like Josephine Baker, um, the early years of even Marcel Marceau, uh, like all they all used their position in society as performer and and as and in some ways being out outside of society and commenting on society but they use their fame to um to do some real good particularly in times of, of war or turmoil and so that greatly influenced me when i was prepping uh and to answer the second part of your question i think uh, uh, you know the best artists in the world always respond to the world around them and um and want to adapt and become part of that movement and so if the world is becoming darker becoming grittier then i think um the artists sometimes do that or sometimes they push against that and throughout season two we get to explore we get to see ask exploring that whether he wants to kind of accept that this is a horrible horrible place to live or fight against it and try and find the optimism and the light uh, in himself and in everyone around him so that sort of dichotomy is something that i uh really enjoyed kind of walking that tightrope walk on really all right, Mimi, I'm coming your way with a spoiler question now, because 
you know, I would say Fringilla had a fairly one track mind in like the future material in season one, but it's like a real wealth of, of nuance and layers for you this time around. So was there any particular new element or side of the character that felt re especially rewarding for you to tap into that you're excited to share with fans? Yeah, I remember in season one, constantly having discussions with Lauren about um, uh, Fringil Fringilla's internal struggle and me sometimes being like, oh, should I show it here or did it? And it was like, no, let's just wait because it's coming, right? And so this season, I love the fact you get to see how she makes decisions. You get to see who influences her and who she really doesn't want to be working with, but she has to in moments. Um, and that's really fun to play. I love that dynamic and that struggle in her. Great success in that department. And y'all come and grill you with more questions later today. But huge congratulations to all three of you. I love the new season. <laughs>